wish I closed my Photoshop file. Let me open it again. Okay. So again, the first thing I want you to do is open up layers. If you don't see layers, you go under window layers. Layers is the way that you organize your content inside of Photoshop. So right now, if you don't, your layers might be jammed way over here somewhere to move a window around. So if layers is jammed over here in the corner, because it's kind of messy here, somebody, you know, these, there's too many Photoshop teachers in here, me, Gene, Sue, we're all using Photoshop, it's messy. To bring layers out, if it's jammed in a, in a thing over here, you can just click on the word layers and pull it out, and it'll pull out the layers window. And to make it bigger, you can put your cursor along the bottom and make it bigger. So let's read what is in the layers window. If you don't see it, again, it's on the window layers. The first one is the background layer. That happens when you make a new file. So if you go File New, and you don't tell it to be transparent from the get-go, it's going to make a background layer, which is fine. You'll notice it's white. Next, you have this layer one, which is the one that we copied and pasted from the internet. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to lock this. This one's automatically locked because it's the background layer. See the little lock right there? So I don't want to mess with this. This is just like my backdrop. Okay. So to lock that, let's name it too. See how it says layer one? In the future when I have 30 of these layers, I'm not going to want to have um, that. So I'm going to double click on that and I'm going to call it my template. template. So you can double click on the word and change it. When you're done clicking on the word and changing it, you can click on the layer and hit this lock right there. See the lock right there? Boom. Locks it. Again, double click on the word, then it says layer one, and then change the name and then lock it if you can, if you can do that. And you, you're going to have to get used to that. I Yesterday I was working on a photograph, and I had at least probably 20 layers almost. Because I had, you know, different pieces. I had plugs, I had products, I had cables, I had this, I had that, all jammed together. Okay, next let's bring in our icon that we made last class. Hopefully you saved what we made last class. If you didn't, that's okay. You're going to have to make another one. You shouldn't know how to make it by now. I taught you how to make them. We're going to use the one from last class. So bring the one in from last class. We go under File. Place. Now there's two places inside of Photoshop. You got place embedded and place linked. Okay, and they both do two different ways of putting this in. So again, remember last class we made an Illustrator file, right? I'm going to bring this Illustrator file into Photoshop. To bring the Illustrator file into Photoshop, I use this place option. Now there's two options here: place embedded and place linked. What, what is the difference? Well, the embedded one takes that icon that we made in Illustrator and makes it part of this file. The place link, what it does is it brings that icon in, puts it in here, but it has a reference to the one that, or wherever it's saved. So if you open that icon up in Illustrator, change the color, change something, and save it in Illustrator, it'll automatically update here because they're linked together. Uh, so it's up to you which way you want to go. But of course, if it's linked, it needs to stay. They have to stay together. The Photoshop files and the Illustrator file would have to stay together forever. So it's, it's really up to you how you want to manage your files. I use embed usually if I'm not going to change it. And if I do need to change it, I could change it and then import it again. I don't, it's up to you how you, which way you do it. But just keep it. I'm going to use embed so I don't have to worry about linking things. Yes? Any? Yes? You guys cool? I'm going to go to desktop, find my icon from yesterday. I don't know what I called it. What did I, I called it something. I remember I was making, what did I make? I made a what? A knife and fork? There's a knife and fork I made. There's a bread one I made. Somebody deleted it. Whoosh. Yeah, somebody deleted it. That's what you get for sharing files. What did I call it? I still can't remember what I made. Oh, there's my template. Oh, here it is, the truck one. Thank you. 
I'm going to use Illustrator. Don't use the PNG. What is the difference between the Illustrator and PNG? Illustrator is going to be vector, and I want to keep it vector inside of Photoshop. I don't want to make it... Um, this is going to be made of pixels. So, yes, there's a delivery truck. I'm going to put it in my folder here. I'm going to copy it into my folder here. Look, so I hold down, if you want to move things around and copy them when you're moving them around in the operating system, you hold down the option key on the keyboard. Notice I'm moving from one folder to another folder. I want to move from one folder to another folder, which is not good because now I have two files, but whoosh, I don't know. I'm going to try and manage myself. So having two files on the same thing on a computer isn't very good either. I don't know what to tell you. Okay, here we go. So to bring that in, I'm going to go under File, Place Embedded, grab my truck delivery, hit Place. It's going to ask you how you want to put it in there. You'll notice you got Page, Image, and 3D. I'm just going to say Page and hit OK. It'll bring it in. Now it keeps it as vector. It's kind of big. I can shrink it down if I want. I'm going to shrink it down and I'm going to put it somewhere maybe about half the size here or something like this. When you're done shrinking it and moving it around, remember Command Plus is to zoom in, Command Minus is to zoom out. Command Plus, zoom in, Command Minus, zoom out. In, out, in, out. I'm going to hit the space bar. Oh, I don't, I guess it's not, if I zoom in more, it will give me space. There we go, move it around. So when you're done scaling it or doing whatever you want, you hit the move tool, this one right here, boom, and say place. Notice when I bring this in and save it and place it, you'll see that this icon in the layers window has this little thing right here. Compared to this one, look, it doesn't have a little icon here. You can see the icon here? This one has no icon there. What does this icon mean? It's still vector. It means it's called a smart object, and it, it can be scaled without the pixels getting all goofy and stuff, but it still thinks it's like illustrator vector. But you have some limitations on what you can do if it is in that format. One of them is as far as vector to it, like drop shadow and things like that. But at least it's here and it's it's a start. Okay, let's do a little Futura and we'll make one button and then we'll quit and then you'll make you draw your own button today. Okay, so I'm gonna put this in a box if you remember from uh, last class. Uh, we were looking at, uh, where was it, where was it, where was it, I swear I had, oh, I had a, that was it, I had a, a, um, a Word document, didn't I, here it is, food app doc, here it is, this is the Word document I kind of posted for this lesson here, remember this, from last class, oh, and this is where my thing is, here, you, oh, here's a different template I downloaded, see it here, so that's why I want you to put it in this, okay? Do you see that? But if you see here, you'll notice you got this nice sort of line that goes around it like this. See that? And then there's some text in there. We're going we're gonna to make a nice round pill. This is sometimes referred to as a pill. So you can do square. You, can, you don't have to do rounded edges and so on. So we'll do a nice round edge, and then we'll put our Futura in there, some text in there, and then uh, we'll be done, and then you'll make your own icon. Okay, so let's try that. Here we go. First thing I'm going to do is go back to Photoshop here. And I'm going to look at my layers window and make some decisions. What are some of the decisions I want to make? Well, I got kind of the background is white and this. Um, let me zoom out a little bit here. Um, okay, let's make a, 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 a square shape because this is not very good. It's going to be good in a pill shape. So to make a square shape, I'm going to use the shape options, and I hope you still have them. I know certain teachers change them, or certain students change them, but again, I use a lot of these 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 um, shapes right here. If you don't see them, they're here. You got your rectangle tool, round rectangle tool, polygon tool, ellipse tool, polygon tool, line tool, custom shape tool. Do you see these right here? I'm going to use the rectangle tool. It's this one right here, rectangle tool. Now, I don't want to have a, a, well, let's put a color in. I'm going to do a really light gray with a, a kind of a black line. So, again, the shape tools of what I'm using. I think we used these again last class. I think we did, didn't we? These ones right here. Again, it's right here. Rectangle tool. Here's the color. Here, make sure it says shape. See how it says shape right here? Shape, not path, not pixels, shape. And then you see the fill here. I'm going to do a nice light gray to change the fill here to light gray. I'm going to click on it 
and I can choose a light gray from the pop-up window. If you don't have a light gray there, you can always go to the, the box here and choose a light gray. Again, there's a, there's a color picker right there. So again, in Photoshop, I'm using the shape layer and I'm using light gray. Then here's the stroke. I'm gonna, I'm gonna. The so stroke is a line around the shape. Remember, this is a shape. It's kind of like a shape in Illustrator. In Illustrator, you have a shape that has a fill, which is the color on the inside, and a stroke, which is a line around the outside. I'm actually gonna leave the stroke black here, and if it's not black, you can click on black right there, and then you can change the pixel size. I'm gonna change it to two. You can just type it in if you want. I'm gonna type in two there. You can change the type of line you want if you want. And sometimes I do do that, but again, two. I can't do two. There we go. Two? No. I guess I have to drag this horrible thing. I can't type two in there. No. Was anybody able to type two in there? Yeah. Two? Oh, okay. It worked. Okay. Then I'm going to draw a box kind of around my icon towards the edge there. You'll notice. Here, let me zoom in again. Command plus and zoom in. And then I'm going to kind of draw a box around my icon here, like that, using holding the left mouse down and dragging, boom. Then you say to yourself, well, I can't see my icon anymore. Well, that's where we're going to look in the layer window. You'll notice my rectangle is over my truck delivery. And so in the window, in, in the layers window inside of Photoshop here, in the layers window, things work from bottom up so if I drag the rectangle over top of this it's above this so you can actually move things around inside this window so I'm gonna drag the rectangle below the truck delivery boom like that and so now I have a truck delivery and that icons a little big isn't it I'm gonna shrink that down a little bit if you want to shrink your icon down a little bit you can use your move tool there and I'm gonna shrink it down just a little bit more kinda of get it to fit a little bit more evenly in my box again this is the move tool and the scale tool right here this one right there there we go that's a little bit better so again I have a box in there so think about how things are layered in there think about how things are layered in there anybody got that I'll come and help you for a minute so last thing we're going to do is we're going to put in our Futura text. Here is our text tool right there. So in the text tool inside of Photoshop, there's a variety of text options there. You'll notice you got your horizontal text, your vertical text, your vertical type mask tool, and the horizontal type mask tool. I'm just going to use the first one, which is the horizontal type tool. Before I change it, I'm going to change the font that's up here. So if I click up here, I'm going to go to Fintura. Futura, Futura, where is it? There it is, Futura. And I don't like the big bold one. That's kind of too much bold, but I do don't mind the bold one. This one right here. This bold, not the condensed bold. That's that's hard to read. This bold is not too bad right here. Futura bold. Change the size. 65 is pretty big. Maybe start with a smaller one. We use 84, 48. Sorry. Then you'll notice, so when you're choosing font up here, you got font, you got type of font you got there. I, again, I'm using the bold one there. You got font size, which is in point. What would one inch be? Okay, right here. Which one is one inch? 72. So the very last one there. If you, and I know inches, we don't really use inches. We're using pixels, but remember that forever. 72 point is one inch. The very last one right here. Down here is the type of anti-aliasing. Anti-aliasing is where the edges of an object blend with the stuff that's behind it. So you have sharp, crisp, strong, smooth. It's just the way that the font will render to the content that's underneath it. And they all do a little bit different. Then, of course, you have alignment, left align, center, right align. And then you have color. Right now, it's going to make it gray. If you want to change the color... I'm going to go with the, uh, how about the light blue that we have here? Whoosh. I'm going to suck it up. Notice how I click, I can click on the icon that's out there. And it turns into an eyedropper, and I can actually select the color that's out there. I'm going to match the blue that's in my icon for my text. Did you see that? So if you click on the color swatch, you saw the color swatch up there. Again, how did I do that? 
So again, I have the font selected. I got my font, I got my bold, I got my text, I got sharp, I got left align, and I wanna choose color right here. Again, if I click on the color option and I can take my cursor outside, if I wanted the purple, look at that, boom. But I want the blue, boom. And hit okay. And then I'm gonna click next to it and type in my text. This is what, delivery, right? D-E-L-I-V-E-R-Y, delivery. Pretty ugly, doesn't stand out against the uh, the gray, but hey, at least it's a starting point, right? And you see how to select the color. So again, if you use the move tool here, you can actually make it bigger by just scaling it. Oosh, that doesn't look well. Or instead of doing that, you can use the text tool and select it again. And maybe we don't like that light blue. How about we go with dark blue? And then we change the size. How about we go up to 60? Or you want to do the whole inch, 72, boom, 72. And then, of course, I don't like it in the middle of the icon. I might put it along the bottom or across the top. Uh, maybe in the middle. I don't know. But hey, see if you can put some text next to it in the Weatherford Ventura font. Let's save this font. Let's save this file I meant. To save this file, again, I've already saved it once, so if I go under File Save, I can just go under File Save, boom, it'll update it. Notice up here it says iPhone Template. This is the name of the file. This is the zoom factor, 66.7. Remember we talked about the zoom factor? This is the name of the text that's on there. It says RGB right here. You see there's a forward slash with an 8 in there. What does the 8 mean? 8 means the bit depth of this file. Remember we talked about 8 bits? Did we talk about 8-bit, 16-bit, 24-bit, 32-bit? But 8-bits is 24 -bit. That's what gives you the 16 million colors in that color box window. Anybody got that? So again, I want you to continue with an idea of uh, there. That's my conclusion of my talk today. So next part of this class today, I want you to draw some icons. I'm going to give you some thing, and I'll, I'll explain what to do. Just give me one second. I'm going to quit Photoshop here. Let me st stop recording.